Welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called this, you may ask? So I'll tell you, the accepted meaning of angel is messenger and the accepted meaning of destiny is to make firm establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And of course, I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, Lindsay Staden. But before that, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching the show live at a later date, as it means a lot to both of us are able to connect with like-minded people. So thank you so, so much. Now, if you've never met me before, then my name is Ray, and I'm a guide who helps you remember your divine presence so that you can heal your past, create your future, and transform your present. To expand your consciousness, understand your spiritual path, and take charge of your destiny so that you can fulfill your purpose. Now, I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy, and through divine presence and everything else I've learned over the years, I offer to help you remember why you are here, your spiritual path and the clarity on the next steps to take. Now, each episode of this show covers various themes of your journey, a mini guide meditation or angel oracle card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests like today's guest, Lindsay Staden, about walking a spiral path, especially when you have lost yourself. Now, Lindsay is an eclectic Norse pagan, walking her path for almost 20 years. She is an artist specialising in pyrography, which is wood burning. So we need to find out a bit more about that. And in the last few years during COVID, Lindsay lost her spiritual way and became disconnected with herself. Now she's embarking on a new journey, following a spiral path of self-discovery through her love of shamanic drums and rattles. So without further delay, hello, Lindsay, and welcome to the Angels and Destiny show. How are you today? Hello, thank you for having me. I'm doing really well, thank you. Perfect. So before we get into this fascinating conversation, I want to remind you that not only can you share this video, but you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts as both Lindsay and I want to be part of this conversation. So please don't be shy. So Lindsay, why don't you tell us more about your journey and about walking the spiral path and how shamanic drums and rattles can assist? Thank you very much. Um, yes, like I said, my name is Lindsay Staden and uh, I am from Kent um, and I have been walking a pagan path since, uh, well, it was 2004 where I kind of dedicated myself to paganism, but it came into my conscious before then um, through love of things like Sabrina Teenage Witch, um, Buffy was a big one, that's when Wicca kind of came into my consciousness and I discovered that there was more to witchcraft than say Samantha and Bewitched and that witchcraft isn't evil and um, it was when I was going on to um, college that I started to look for more pagany books and the first pagan book that I picked up I think was a Kate West book yeah and um, Scott Cunningham and I remember buying it because um, I think it was one of the first things that I got off of Amazon and I remember it came and I used to read it with a, a fake cover so that my <laughs> parents didn't know what I was reading and I I absorbed I absorb books I love to read books um, and through that practice I started to find other people online and um, discover more about the the angels and the fairies and the fairies overtook for several years um, I used to be very big um, with um, Matthew Callow who does uh, the magical magazine magical times magazine and I used to help him send all the magazines out and I uh, did um, an article in there with my fantasy artwork because um, where I came from Begin, begin with my artwork was fantasy so I used to do dragons and fairies and mermaids and I used to love all of that and it got me more into then be doing pictures of gods and goddesses and of green men and of folklore and um, as you, you, you travel and you discover more of these things it starts to resonate with you on a more spiritual level and uh, I began uh, going to retreats for my goddess, who is Ellen of the Ways, um, and she is an antlered goddess. I have a lovely statue of her here. This is Ellen, one of my many statues Ellen. of her. She is a Celtic goddess. Um, for the longest time, she was kind of hidden and um, has really taken on a surgence as the years have gone on and more 
been learnt about her. But I went on several retreats with much older women than me because I started my path when I was in my early 20s and uh, a lot of the women around me were much older and um, I was inspired by these older women who um, I connected with and other artists as well. And um, then I discovered um, a, a local group to me called Celtic Moon and we started to learn about Druidry. And with Druidry, I felt an even bigger connection with Ellen because with Druidry, it's much more of honouring of the earth and walking a, a path that is more based in the UK as much as we know. I know there's the reconstructional Druidry and then there's, the, I was part of Obod, so I am a bard on the bardic grade, grade of Obod. And I walked that path for quite some time and I felt very connected with it. Um, and then life happens. I had my baby girl and uh, for the longest time I was mum and uh, that became my, my role and my spirituality was still there, but I was mum more than um, able to go and do all these lovely events that I was doing with all these other ladies. That kind of was on the back burner because um, before I had my daughter is when I first birthed my shamanic drum. So in 2012, I was starting to become more interested in shamanism. It was um, a book that I picked up and it had um, all different pa pagan paths. And one of the sections was all about shamanism. And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm quite interested in shamanism, animism. Everything has a spirit. The spirits call on you and choose you and work very closely with that. Um, and I, where I live, I'm very lucky that just not far from me is a shamanic center. Um, run by the lovely Lynn Gosney of Touch the Earth, um, a beautiful band. And I started to get to know them through doing all the events that I was doing um, as, a, as a, a fantasy artist. And then I was asked if I wanted to go and birth a drum. And I said, yes, I'll go and do that. And I birthed my drum. My drum is here. Can I show you my drum? You can. And tell people about what birthing a drum is. So when we birth a drum, because um, we work with um, with animal skins, um, and the animal skins are are honoured in every process. So with my drum, I chose to birth a deer drum, and here she is. She is, um, yeah, she's almost um, twelve years old now, and she's still looking very good. She's her skin is still nice and supple. So when you birth a drum, you are giving new life to this this animal spirit because we honour the animal that yeah, it was once was. And um, everything down to, I think my hope is Willow, or is it Willow? I can't remember, it's such a long time ago that I birthed this drum, but um, you, you do it in ceremony and everything is weaved in, your intentions are weaved in. And um, it was a beautiful day, I absolutely loved it. And on that day, um, the, an eagle came to visit us because next door they had a bird sanctuary. An eagle came and I had a photograph taken and it was right kind of like next to my shoulder and um, it flapped its wings and one of the feathers flew and got caught in my hair. So I then stuffed it into my beater. So within my beater, I have the eagle and it's with the deer. So um, lovely. she's beautiful and I love her. But little did I know after doing that, I would start going to drum circles every third first of the month over on uh, the instrument centre. And they would get me in co contact with lots of different people and see their path. And the more I've learned about shamanism, the more I was like, oh, I like I like parts of this. This is, this is, this is a bit of me. And that's the only thing. It's like I've never been just one. It's like, I like a bit of this and I like a bit of that. Me and too. that's why I know. Elective paganism is perfectly fine to do. There is nothing wrong with it at all. No. So to say, to um, mention about my pyography that I do, which is the artwork, um, on the day that I made this drum, there was um, the chance to burn onto the wooden hoop. And I don't know if you can see, but on there, I yeah. burnt 
Ellen's, uh, this little symbol made of Ellen, which is of antlers and a heart and some little deer tear trods. My first time ever using a pyrography pen. I had no idea what I was doing. I was really nervous because, again, I was doing this all by myself. I was going off there. I was very young um, and I was like, oh, what am I doing? And my, 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 my then boyfriend, now husband, was all like, what, what are you going to go do? He doesn't get it at all. <laughs> he's, very, he's very supportive, but he doesn't get it at all. And um, I, I said to him after I, when I made, I birthed my drum and I, I used a pyrography pen, I said, can I have a pyrography pen for Christmas? And he was like, yeah, all right. So he bought me this pen. It's like a, a soldering iron. And um, I went crazy. And I was burning images onto little wooden key rings and boxes for like every, every day I was doing something. And this, of course, all happened before I had my daughter. So in a 2013 was a year of pyrography. I was doing wedding favours for people, people's portraiture. And then I was making these boxes and they were had hairs and standing stones and stags and all kind of like um, I did the triple hair, which is the three hairs sharing an ear. I love that imagery. And people were really interested in, in buying my work. So it was like, right, that's, this is where I'm going to move forward and I've done um boxes with the Morrigan um and of Ellen um and of Green Man and it's like it's just like an extension of everything I believe in in, in my artwork my artwork is um Wild Embers um that was a lovely name that came that came to me um because I love the, the book Stone Wild which are really good books but um, I haven't got anything of my biography up here apart from just <laughs> Just like this little token that I made from Imolk, which um, isn't now because we just had Lunacy. Yeah. But um, this is kind of like a, a little token favour that I do. But my pyrography, um, I mean, there's some amazing people who do amazing stuff, but I love, I love what it has brought to me. It's been a real kind of like extra thing because I get to work with wood and wood is very important to me now um, because before I was a digital artist, so everything was on a screen and it wasn't tactile and... Mm. I just love working with wood. So that that kind of like led from the drums was to the pyrography. And I, I did that quite a lot. And then um, I had my daughter, of course. And then, uh, then then Loki came into my life, who is the Norse god. So then I was like, what's, Norse, what, what's this Norse paganism about? So then I started reading about Norse paganism. Yeah, Loki came barreling into my life. He... Um, he took on a form of a snake and he actually bit me. <laughs> As they do. I was walking the dogs. I, I normally wear trousers when walking the dogs. And this day I wasn't wearing trousers. And, um, yeah, I uh, the dog got stuck. So I went to go and rescue her. She got stuck in some like in a bit that she can get out of. And as I was crossing over to get her, something whacked me in the back of my leg. And I was like, oh, what was that? Looked and I saw something like moving on the undergrowth. And I looked at my leg and I had these two pins of, you know, like fang marks yeah. on the back of my leg. I thought, oh, okay, I've been bit by a snake. Right. Okay. Um, what did you do? I phoned my mum and dad. <laughs> like, yeah. uh, we're, we're, in the UK, we're in the UK. Do we have any poisonous snakes? <laughs> Only adders. Adders really are the old problem. Otherwise, grass snakes, they will bite you. But it's like, all depends whether or not. They injected the venom. So we called the ambulance. And I remember it vividly because it was my daughter's second day at preschool. And my husband had gone to take her to preschool. So when they came home, what should they see but this ambulance outside the house? And God, what's gone on? And, um, yeah, the, the, the ambulance people were very nice. And they said well, it was probably you got whacked by um, a bramble or something that had come up. But it was just... It was, I, I didn't feel very well. And I said, right, we'll keep an eye on you 24 hours. If it's, if this happens, if you start to see a line, that means that you've got the event. Like, suffice to say, I was fine. It probably wasn't a snake. But in my mind, I was like, because yeah. Loki had been there quite a lot. And it was like, hey, are you going to pay attention to me? Because if you're not, this is what's going to happen. Yeah. So, yeah, that was, that, was, that was exciting. So that set me on the path of Norse paganism. And um, it's very much, I'm, I'm very much a believer of like the, the Norse Pantheon and um, what the, 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 the Vikings have brought to our country of in the UK, especially in Kent, um, more of the Jutes, but the Anglo-Saxons and all that. It's been a, another verge of discovery and another kind of like step forward.
But then from stepping forward, we start to turn a corner. And from that corner, we realize that we're going back on ourselves. And so from where I started with Druidry and shamanism, leading on to Norse paganism, I am now coming kind of full circle, but not right behind myself, but a step over. Yeah. The spiral is starting. And on that spiral now, I have come back to being more of a shamanistic role because of my, my now my line of work in which I am very, very blessed to have. And if I could talk a little bit about it, I'd be very grateful. You, 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 you can, in, you can indeed. Um, we will get, we will get to that. Um, but uh, the COVID situation where you lost yourself. That's right. So in during COVID, um, I was, I just started work for this company. I'm not going to to name and shame no. because I won't do that. But I started working for a company which I thought was going to be very good for me spiritually. And it turned out that it was the complete opposite. And um, I saw a side of the spiritual world which I didn't like, which is the money side of spirituality. And um, everything that I thought I believed in just saw that it was lining somebody else's pocket. And it got me very, very down. And I was like, well, it's not fair um, that what I believe in, these other people are don't <laughs> from better words so um and, and covid itself as like i couldn't see my mum and dad my mum went through depression really badly um and i wanted to get back into doing my pyrography so it was like my my workplace said right we we can't have you all here so we're gonna say you can't come in i thought great a chance to do my pyrography again because i've been trying to get back into it after having my daughter and I made, I finished off one box for somebody who'd been waiting since probably 2016 <laughs> for me to finish this box for her. And I managed to finish that. I thought, right, this is great. I've got a great setup here. And then they were told, because I was working at my mum and dad's house, and I got told, no, you can't go and see your parents. If you don't live with them, you can't see them. Or if you do see them, you have to be so much distance. And um, so that took a halter on on getting back into doing my, my artwork, which is how I express myself within my paganism. And I just kind of fell off. It's just that I couldn't be bothered to celebrate any of the Sabbaths. I couldn't be bothered to... I mean, I had my altar still up, but it just it was just kind of like an afterthought. It, was, it just held nothing for me. And I was like, well... well it was such a part of my life and for that to then not be important to me anymore was really worrying and um yeah so it was it was um it was it took a lot to kind of like think no just because one company operate like this doesn't mean like everybody who is in this line of work are the same you know, I just, I knew that. And um, I started talking to other people who run these sort of business and I could see that they were genuine. So that really helped. That really helped. And just kind of, I don't know, um, just once we got back out of COVID, we were able to go to festivals again and meeting up with my friends who were all, all pagan and just say, talking to them really. I think it was just the isolation because the only things things were getting a bit toxic on the internet at, at that time as well so I and I just felt myself feeling well if I'm not pagan then what am I am I just mum and for the longest time I thought well I'll just I'll just be I'll just be this person who isn't really me yeah which is why when we we I now look where I am now and what I'm doing with my life I uh, I, I can see that I've turned that that circle I've turned that corner and I'm so much more happier and people who I meet who see me after seeing me as I was saying wow you're you're glowing now you're amazing you're you're so vibrant and I was like I found myself again I found who I was I lost it and I'm back and I'm discovering and moving forward I'm not reclaiming what I was because I was much younger then and I yeah. didn't know as much as I did now now there's things that I'm doing now that I've always wanted to do, like get my nose pierced. <laughs> I've always wanted to do that. <laughs> and um, I will 
now's the time you know i'm on the cusp of turning 40 so it's like if i don't do it now then 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 when what well, when i'm 50 when i'm you know so it's like and everybody who's who's seen me now that i've got my nose piercing I'm like oh, surely you always ha- you always, had, you always it. had it you always had it surely and it's like no it's like oh well it really suits you and there's other things that i've been doing which to me i really like i might upset other people by doing them but i'm not there to please them i'm not there for them they might think i i've been a people pleaser and i've tried to make people like me i'm not everybody's cup of tea you know dita von t says it best you can be the juiciest loveliest peach in the planet and there's always going to be somebody who doesn't like peaches i don't like peaches I don't think. <laughs> but there you go. That's it. It's like peach. You know, you're like, oh, you're so lovely and juicy, but not everybody's going to like you. And it's like, I don't know anyone who doesn't not like me. But it's like I've come to a point where I know that I try and be an aspect that they want me to be, and I've just decided, no more, yeah. no more. This is who I am. If you love me for that, that's great. If not anymore, then. That's yeah, it. that's your choice. Yeah. And I think that's one of the hardest things, actually, um, in this day and age with sort of like the Internet and everything that's going on. It's like everyone just tries to be what everyone else thinks they should they, they should be. You know, I, I remember as a child, you know, I was never sort of like one of the I, I never have been one of the crowd anyway, you know, but I always had that kind of like silent confidence and it would be like you know at school but if you don't do this and you're not my friend and my reply was well if you don't want me to be me then I don't want to be your friend That's it. you know but I've and I've, I've always had that but I've watched over the years um and it's, and especially now as well that everyone just tries to be who everyone else thinks they want to be nobody's yeah. sort of like being their own individual person anymore yeah. which i think is really really sad it's so sad and it is it's social media is a very big part of that um and i said at my for my news resolution i don't normally set them for my news resolution this year was to be more authentic to be my authentic self and um some people have come into my life that knew me before and maybe are not in my life so much now and I was like oh is that because my authenticity is saying I don't need them and I'm that's 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 fine with me I mean unless there's some nothing nasty has happened since I've decided to live in my present self and be happy with who I am and not change myself for anybody apart from if I want to then that's fine with me and I'm feeling more confident as myself um I have wobble. Everybody has wobbles about themselves. Like I don't have my own house. I don't have this. I have, you know, I um, I don't have a, a successful job in which I'm earning thousands. I don't know what those jobs are, and you know, I just only have ever wanted to be an artist of some sort of create. I just love creating things. I love to that. I love the process of making, and then seeing the joy on that person's face when I've made them something is it means more to me than anything and i just wish that we did live more in a society in which that was more celebrated rather than oh but you only drive that sort of car or uh, you only shop at those sort of shops and that's where society as a whole has kind of gone wrong and it's like why it's like it's so important for my daughter to realize that being outside and being in with nature she's absolutely obsessed with animals which i've given her and I hope that she will grow more as a person because of that, rather than be worried about what the latest trend on TikTok is or all of that stuff, you know, so. Yeah, and, and I think that is, you know, quite often parents are, um, you know, for, you know, forget as parents that we have such an influence on our, on our, ch- on our children. Mm-hmm. And if you're being as authentic as you possibly are, then that's going to, um show show with your children and if mm. you've got the confidence they're going to have the confidence that's it she's um, got amazing oh the confidence in that little girl is n- i'm so not jealous but envious because she can just make friends with anybody and i remember being her age and being like to my mum and being like no i don't want to go over there she just go mum can i go and talk to them and see if they want to play i'm like yeah okay and she does and she makes friends really easy i have no fears of that little girl on her future her future is going to be so bright i know it 
Yeah. Hmm. So she, she's she's so she's going to be she's going to be one of those that is going to be bringing in this new energy. Yeah. Um, where you know individuals within communities. Yeah. Are going to be so important. I think we're slowly um, getting there, but it, but yeah, it'll be your your daughter's generation that kind yeah. of like will really sort of like bring that to, bring that to the fore. So you know, I've got no fears about about the future or anything like that because no. we are working towards it and more and more people are finding their their authentic self their authentic yeah. voice yeah um you know especially when they're doing you know doing things like you you know and you know you've moved on to the onto the drumming now so tell us about that or, um, uh, what you're doing now with that so with the drumming so um of course I was in my previous job and I was getting very down about it and I decided enough's enough I'm leaving so I left and for the good part I left in the January for a good part of the year I was busy again being mum um taking my daughter to school picking her up and all of that and getting back into doing my biography I was like right this is great this is really good Ah, money is starting to become an issue. Now, every time I go to Glastonbury, um, I always go to the Goddess Temple and I always sit in the Goddess Temple and I always say I'm looking for abundance or some form of kind of like bettering myself, especially when it comes to work. And every time I've gone there, opportunity has followed afterwards. So I was like, right, I'm going to go to Glastonbury again. I'm going to go to the Goddess Temple and ask for some guidance towards prosperity to, to abundance to, to joy in a job that's what I the, that's the main thing that I wanted whatever job I got I want it to be joyful I want it to bring more than just money I want it to bring wholeness I want it to to bring a, a, a glow to my life which I'd had and then it got taken away from me so it's like that's what I'm really looking for and even before I got to the goddess temple or did I go to the goddess temple no it's the second day but even before I got to the goddess temple my friend Esther who's a wonderful um artist and leather worker um said to me Lindsay did you see that Jonathan from Heron Drums is looking for someone he's looking to hire someone I said okay Jonathan is who I birthed my drum with yeah, then it was 10 ago. years ago, 10 years ago. And I said, oh, okay, I'm going to message him right now. So we're, we're in the pub and I said, right, I'll send him a message. So I sent him a message, got a message back straight away. Hi, Lindsay, great to hear from you. Yes, I'd love for you to come and have a chat with me um, when you're back from Glastonbury. I, you know, suffice to say, I got the job. I got the job as a crafting and marketing assistant with Heron Drums. And um, ever since then, um, I have flourished. Um, I mean, I've always loved the drum. The drum has always been very important. But to actually now be working in a world which that is very much centre to my world now just feels so right. And as I get through doing um, working with Heron Drums, um, I get to make the cut the uh, the hides that we use for the drums, and it's all done in ceremony, all done respectfully, all done with beautiful intentions. It's absolutely it's beautiful how we work. Um, I do the the social media content mostly on there. So when you go on to the Instagram, that's pretty much me doing all of all of that, um, give or take Jonathan as well. Um, and running uh, markets. So um, one of the reasons I, I got the job was I said to Jonathan, I'm starting to do my biography again. With that, I'm looking at tours, doing markets and selling them. He says, well, how would you be up for running markets, uh, market store with having drums with wild embers on the side? I was like, sign me up. And of course, that's how I met Right yeah. here, I was doing the Kent Wellness Festival, and I was there, drumming my little heart out and giving people healing, which is something that I just play the drum. It's like having, like giving, giving that to people was such a joy, and it's just it, I was so energetic, and I have such a passion to share with people about these beautiful medicine instruments that are absolutely they're so easy to play. It's like people say to me, "Well, how do you play a drum?" It says, "You just take a stick and you beat it." And if you get a rhythm, that's great. If not, the rhythm will come because we all have a drum inside of us. We all have this heartbeat. When the heartbeat is one of the first things that we as humans hear. It's our mother's heartbeat in the womb. And for a lot of people, when they hear a drum playing, they say it affects them. And sometimes it goes to the heart and sometimes it goes to the womb. It all depends. If you're a mother, I think it might affect you more in the womb than it does your heart. But otherwise, most people, it is the heart. And I says it's because it's unlocking that core memory that we forget. 
and it's just like the the the, the, the heartbeat that you hear and the, the the drumming is just a a tribal it's a, it, it's something that we we've locked away in our, our our brains but it gets you can't not get emotional i haven't come across anybody much who said they don't like the sound of drums and with yeah. that i've been making rattles um the rattles are really fun to make i've been making like little pendant rattles which are lovely like little personal rattles and um just everything that we do is in ceremony and we light the, the altar candles as we come in we bless the spirits and that has boosted my spirituality so much it's like i feel i feel finally here we are again how i felt when i first discovered paganism all those little years all those years ago and it's so beautiful and i i'm just just in joy the joy that it brings me and I, I just love i just love walking this path yeah and and it is amazing you know when we were at the wellness festival um lindsay kind of like went round um initially and sort of like um, i did the drumming and then every time you sort of like, if I, I need to use the bathroom or something, she, someone would be there and she was she was drumming around them. And sort of like, if I went to give my, what's it, I can't remember if it was before or after I was. It was after your talk. After, oh, after, oh, yeah, I think it was after, because you were um, like. Yeah, after my talk, I, I was around sort of like, so, so I did a talk there and I came down and I was sort of like really hyper in that. And it's like, I've walked past Lindsay and she's gone, you need some drumming, don't you? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and she, she's sort of like, drummed around me but the energy that was coming from you was it is so enthusiastic it is so you know you were just sort of like lighting lighting up um with it and it was actually actually amazing you know, even on on here you know to listening to you talking and watching you talking you know the energy from you is just so um beautiful beautiful coming off you and that so with the drumming and the rattles i mean i can speak from my own experience of mm -hmm. having the of the drumming um what other benefits do they they have for you oh um, well yeah um, I'm, they're great for self-expression for one thing is like once you've got a drum in your hand and I, I went to a lovely festival last weekend in which a lot of people were there it was a it was a women's festival so all these women were coming from all over the place from different paths spirituality some some were just there for empowerment and um it was just handing them a drum and then they were suddenly well they were like well what do i do says well just just hit it and then suddenly they were, and then they started to move and they started to get in the groove and it was just lovely to witness. And I said, there you go. Now you're a drummer. And I'm like, oh, is it that easy? It's the easiest thing. I give drums to little toddlers and I give them the beta and they know exactly what to do. And it's like, it's, it's, it, it gives, it gives you joy. It's, it's a way of kind of like, it's a bit of serotonin as well. Um, it, it does allow to express it. I express myself through my drum and through my voice as well. Cause I like to also include my voice and chants. And sometimes I get this much older, wiser woman coming through and I'm like, Oh, who are you? <laughs> You're not my voice. I don't sound like that. It's bizarre. The first time I did it, I was shocked and surprised. It's also good for like journeying as well. So if you not you yourself playing the drum, but if you have somebody there playing a drum, there's plenty online if you do a search for shamanic journeying. And um, that really helps me because I'm not very good at meditating. My brain is far too busy to just sit and I, I, like, I have too many thoughts all the time. It's like, oh, am I doing it? Oh, no, don't. I, oh, I'm doing it now. No. Uh, oh, did I do that? I can't remember. No, don't. So yeah. I'm not very good when it comes to meditating, but drum, drum journeying is beautiful. So you go in and you, it's like a, 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 um, a path working, but you listen to the drums and with the drums, you go down, you go, you find a tree or you find a cave and then you go into the cave and you go down, you go down. Deeper, deeper with the drums and there you can find your spirit allies they can be evil ancestors or you can find your animal your totem animal your spirit animal i have had several through my path <laughs> they come and they go um yeah. stag white stag was the first one very big stag energy um i've had mother bear when i had my daughter and she was the one who says look she's your daughter stop letting them tell you what how to raise your daughter you know what's best for your daughter you are mother bear 
stop with this. <laughs> Lately, it's been crow or at least a, co a corvid. So either a magpie, crow, raven of the family, they've been the one that's been kind of kind of like coming in and, and yeah, giving I've, like I've been having crows coming in. A yes, bit. yeah, crow's energy is like really strong of late um, mm. with a lot of people. I had this lovely magpie box that I had for sale at the festival and this lady came, she says, I'm having that. She says, I've had magpie. She's got a magpie tattoo. She says, but lately, magpie won't shut up. <laughs> so I think it's like that, that those sort of animals really have a message and they will not leave you alone until you actually take on board the medicine and the information that they have to impart to you so listen to your guides so sometimes you think no you're not obviously not then you're like mm, have a look under the deeper meaning don't look into the books because the books will only say what the author wants you to know but have a look at a broader Look at folklore in which the animal comes into. Look at how the animal lives in its habitat, the real life animal, and see like, well, how does that? My friend just kept seeing bees everywhere. And she's like, Lindsay, why am I seeing bees? She says, you're looking for your sisterhood. You're looking for, you're, you, you've been so alone and working for so long. She says, you need to find community. And she's gone and done that now. So she's listened to the bees. Yeah. And um, so shamanic journeying is a really good way of finding like, um, self-awareness and discovering it's great for your health you ever, ever drum for a long period of time good oh, exercise oh yeah man i mean my muscles aren't but yes they are especially the really big drums they they they, they take a lot of stamina but and it's it, it's good it's good it gets your heartbeat going it get, gets uh, the brain working um and also it's good for community if you go if you've got a drum and it says well i have a drum but i don't know I, I can't play it go find a drum circle start a drum circle we have a wonderful map on our website which can pinpoint all the different drums drumming circles within the uk um but they're a wonderful thing to partake in because you know you're there you're all there for the drum doesn't matter about what's going on the rest of your life you're all there to play your drum and it doesn't matter if you're a beginner an expert that no such thing you're all there. You're all there to have a good time. And sometimes you get lost and you don't know how long you've been playing for. I miss going to drum circle. That's one of the one things I hope to start going in. Now my daughter's getting older. And she even said to me, Mummy, if you want to go back to doing drum circle, you can. But before then, because she's very much a cuddly girl at night time. Yeah. And I get really tired. I give a lot of energy during the day. So once I put my daughter to bed, I am done. Yeah. So hopefully I will get the energy to start going back to drum circle because the community that that brings is is a, is a joy. Really, really good. And, you know, it's like um, drumming has helped me with my spiritual growth. And it's like it was it was something that I didn't know I needed until I had it. It's like my friend gave me a drum to play and I'm there. And we did this whole thing about being the deer and the, the sound of the drum was the, 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 the deer's foot trods. And I was like, oh, this is something I need in my life. And honestly, they are a bit, it's a bit addicting. It really is. And they're, yeah. they're beautiful things. They are. Yeah. Well, I've got an idea. So um, as you know, um, I do angel oracle cards and guided meditations. And each week I like to ask my guests whether they would like me to do a mini guided meditation, angel oracle card reading. But what I'm thinking is, if I do a card, and we see what the message of the card is, and then maybe you can do a bit of drumming with regards to what the message of the card is and see nice. what comes through. Yeah, sounds good. Yep. Yeah, let's okay. do it. So, okay, so what does Lindsay and everyone who's watching this need to know for their highest good? And, oh, okay. Oh, that was a jumper. That was a jumper. Oh, my gosh. And it's perfect. Oh, good transformation a fresh new way of living emerges with the phoenix oh the phoenix what a wonderful wonderful thing lovely yep phoenix energy fire yeah yes. ex exactly which is which is um with you know which is which is perfect so it is literally saying to lindsay and to everyone watching you know transformation is taking place now you know embrace everything new that's that's coming in look for new things you know leave the old behind now because things are brighter, they are more alive now. So start looking for that. Um, so yes, a beautiful card to come out. So let's see what the drum's got to say. Come on, darling. There we go. A beautiful dear drum. Right. Phoenix energy. Okay, we've got this. Yeah.
Perfect. Um, you know that. You, you know this doesn't give it um, as much. Uh, it, you know, it's not as it, it's, this. This gives you an idea. But when you're actually in that space with the drums actually going live, Ooh. it is so. Um, it, all the way down to your toes. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's beautiful energy. Love it. Yeah. So um, you know, if, if anyone wants to watch this back, you know. Um, you know, as you do it, as you're doing it, just close your eyes and imagine yourself as the phoenix rising. Um, that's what I was actually doing when uh, when when, uh, Lin when Lindsay was playing, um, because it is such a a beautiful um, thing to do. So, Lindsay, do you have any insights or thoughts of la or last words of wisdom to leave our viewers at all? My latest mantra for life has been to just do the thing. If it's something dangerous, then don't do the thing. But if it's something that you've really wanted to do for all your life and you thought, oh, I won't because of this, oh, I won't be for that. If in, re in within reason, do the thing. Just do the thing. Just take that. And you never know what it could lead on to. I've been putting that into practice more and more. And I've only had positivity come from just doing the thing. Being brave. Taking those steps. There you go. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. And of course, um, I'm guessing your daughter is, is probably exactly the same and you're learning from her because oh, yeah. I bet you she just goes and goes, yeah, I'm doing this. She's just up, she's up and doing it. She's in front of lots of people. She'll say, oh, I'm going to go and do that. And I'm like, really? She's amazing. She's such an inspiration. I'm so proud of her. That's a different story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you, you know, so so as you know, as Lindsay, you know, as Lindsay said, you know, go and do it. You know, children are quite good at doing it, and sometimes we just need to take that step back yeah. to to we to have that unwavering fear that the children have that they don't care. They just want to do what's enjoyable and happy for them. Yeah. And that so so thank you for sharing that. Sure. And I hope everyone that you've enjoyed this conversation and found it insightful because I know I definitely have. So if people want to connect with you, Lindsay, how do they do that? So um if I could say about Heron Drums, I'd love yeah. that. So Perfect. um you can find us at uh www.herondrums.co.uk. That's for our, our, our uh, drum um service we would provide. We we sell drums, we do drum birthing workshops, we I create rattles that are then sold there. Um it's a wonderful website. We have blog posts, very informational informational <laughs> lots, lots of information, of information. lots of information and um, we're also on instagram as um heron drums if you find us on there for me personally um i am lynn's underscore pagan that's on my instagram you can also find me there as wild embers pyro which is spelt w y l d e wild then p r y o pyro pyro um well no sorry wild embers I missed out the embers oh, wild embers pyro and that's for my pyrography i don't update as much as i should because i'm so busy doing things with heron drums but lynn's pagan is where you'll find me on instagram perfect and what i'll do is i will put after the show i will put her um, links to all of those so people just literally need to click on it um 
and there they will be. So thank you so much, Lindsay, for sharing your wisdom. It's been absolutely brilliant and for and for sharing your drum with us. Um, thank so thank you so much for that. And of course, if you are now ready to remember your divine presence and step onto your spiritual multidimensional path, but you feel lost, confused, stuck or alone, then please feel free to reach out and connect with me. Um, and we can see where you are now and how you can move forward to take charge of your destiny so that you can spread your wings and soar and fulfill your purpose. And of course, please feel free to join my weekly newsletter and receive a free future life progression recording to discover your destiny by singing to your future to get guidance and clarity that can, you can use in your current life, as well as maybe a couple of other free gifts. And again, thank you everyone so much for watching. And I'd like to invite you to share this video as I'm sure there are more people who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny just like you. And of course, if you're watching this on YouTube, then please feel free to subscribe and hit that bell button to be notified of when the show goes live or I post new guided meditations because each comment, each subs uh, um, subscribe, each like really does help um, get you know this show out so that people can connect to the wisdom of my guests like Lindsay and all my other guests that can really help you on your journey. And I look forward to your joining me same time, same place next week. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.